right, so we're back at it again this morning and we're doing some tarpon fishing. And um, so we're headed out and it's a beautiful morning, gorgeous out, a little bit on the hot side, but you know, that's summertime here in Florida. So what we're gonna do is we've heard in the area and from my fans on Facebook, they have told me that there is mullet in the area and they have been catching tarpon daily on live mullet. Um, and the key to fishing is you gotta have the right bait at the right time to catch the fish. So we had live crabs yesterday and we also had dead mullet, but people are telling us we need that live mullet. So uh, we just got a few bait spots from some people we fished with in the past. So thank you very much, Captain Kayvon. And we're gonna head over to that area and check it out and see if we can get some bait this morning and then go and catch a tarpon. Hey guys, we didn't get any mullet in that spot, but uh, continuing our little uh, but first we're trying to get some mullet and hopefully we can catch a tarpon but uh, if that doesn't work out we'll see what happens but uh, you know again we're in a new area and I'm just trying to give you our thought process on trying to catch a fish you know again uh, we're not the expert inshore fishermen they start says nope. offshore <laughs> so yes. we can probably go offshore and catch a fish would it be too much we've too only hard. caught like two tarpon like in, since we've been fishing so we really it's we're like new to this especially down here in the Keys Right, exactly. And just because you're in the Keys doesn't mean you're guaranteed to catch a fish. Um, anyway, so we, we went to a mullet spot that a friend told us about. We saw some mullet, we weren't able to catch any. Uh, they went down deep and then they, we saw them once and they kind of disappeared. Yeah. But here we are at the Seven Mile Bridge. Um, I'll get you a better shot closer. But we came up on the Seven Mile Bridge and we see uh, two boats behind us. Yeah. And we look on the chart and it's very common in the Keys. There, there's a big uh, bank over there, sandbar. And see so the water comes through the bridge uh, through the deep water under the seven mile bridge and it hits the, the sandbar and tarpon and, and other fish are known to, to back up on that bank and so we noticed these two guys here so we stopped and we're just kind of observing them for a minute again you know we're taking all the surroundings these are kind of some of the things you want to look for we got the structure of the bridge we got the channel coming through we got some guys here you know they're probably guides um, they certainly know <laughs> probably a good chance they know better than we you know, do what's going on around here and uh, you know it looks like one guy's on the flat and one guy's in the channel. I, I, it looks like he's slinging big mullets. So, uh, you know, these are things we're trying to learn. Uh, we can always go up on this bridge. Uh, on any bridge, you can really, especially in the Keys, you can anchor up and throw back some shrimp on a jig and get some mangroves. Uh, nice mangrove snappers, see a lot of sharks. But, yes. um, you know, so we could do that, but we're not. Uh, so we're gonna go check another mullet spot and uh, let you know our thought process. And um, here we go. All right, so we didn't have any luck with the mullet. We're going to go try something different that one of our uh, friends told us about. Someone, on, one of our fans. Uh, our sizzle being popular is great for getting fishing information. Uh, it's a little choppy on the Atlantic side for us, as you can see. We have a 17-foot aluminum flats boat. Uh, so, well, here we go. So, I'm still trying to catch mullet and we found a little area. I'm talking low because I don't want to spook the fish. Um, but basically we found a little area by a marathon here and we went into a little like canal and nobody's back here and um, there's a ton of mullet back here. Problem is they're up on the trees and up on the mangroves and I can't really throw my cast net onto the mangroves and um, this area is kind of like run down so there's sunken boats and there's stuff all on the bottom of this canal and I just caught caught on a big old tree so I'm going to still try to catch these mullet um, and be a little quiet and see if I can find them again. Oh, here they come, baby. Chunk them. Did you see how close those mullet were? See, they're right under the branches. They're very smart. Sun is very high. It's difficult. And they're right under the branches, and, and Darcy just can't throw under there. It's uh, tough. I think I got two. I got bait. All right, so the great hunters, we got two mullet so far. So uh, at least we, I think it's a good spot. Noon, it's a horrible time to catch mullet, and uh, horrible time to catch fish too. And uh, well, we'll see how it goes. Darcy's gonna maybe get some more on the way out of here.
What do you think, Sizzle? <laughs> We've been in this area for like two hours now, and I've just been busting my butt out here. I've thrown the net, I don't know, a lot of times, dozens of times. You can see all the mess up here on my boat, on my pretty sea deck. So I've been throwing the net a ton of times, not catching that much bait. Caught a couple mullet and they're dying in our well, which is kind of disappointing. So like, you know, I work so hard for these fish and they're dying in the well. Um, but we're going to head out of here finally. Um, the water's getting real low and I'm going to see if I can catch some more. The lower the tide, the better it is for my cast net. I can actually catch the fish and the bait is actually pushed into the to the deep part of the, this canal. Um, so that way it actually gives me an opportunity to catch them. So we're gonna keep at it for a little bit longer and head out and go do some fishing. It's a hard knock life out here, guys. Uh, we're gonna try this spot. Uh, fan tolls about. It's middle of the day. I'm not expecting much. I really just want to get some lines in the water. It doesn't look like anything right here, frankly. But uh, there's someone else fishing here, one or two people. I'm going to anchor up, throw out a chum bag, and just relax for a little bit and uh, take it easy. So we are still at the spot that uh, our, one of my fans told me to come and visit, and it, the current is not moving. So we had chum out, and we decided to do some bait fishing. And we are catching some pinfish, some live pinfish. And basically what we're doing is, I'm going to take this guy off and put him in the well. But basically what we're doing is um, we've got the chum going out behind the boat and all the little mangroves and the little juvenile fish come up to us. And then we put a little tiny long shank hook, I'll show you it in a second, with a piece of shrimp. And then you just let it free line it and drift it right behind your boat. And um, hold that for me, thanks. Hold, and then you drift it right behind your boat and you kind of just wait for the bite. And I didn't want to touch that bait at all. You don't want to touch your live bait, um, especially you know when you're going to be keeping them for fishing later on. So I just used a de-hooker and took them off my hook. And I have this long mustad shank hook. Whoa. And you can see it right here. And we just tip it with a little bit of shrimp. And you just free, free line it back pretty easy. We actually caught a live ballyhoo too, so that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's how you do it, and we're just having a little bit of fun. It's getting to the hottest point of the day, so we're going to go in and have some lunch. Um, but we just caught a few baits. So I got three mullets, four pinfish, and one ballyhoo. No fish yet. And crabs and shrimp. Oh yeah, live crabs and shrimp, and haven't caught a fish yet. <laughs> <laughs> We're at the room right now and we've been at the room for a couple hours and we headed in after a long day of being out and exploring Marathon in the area that we're fishing. And you know, being inshore, it's a little tough for us because we're used to being offshore. And the number one thing is when you're fishing inshore anywhere, you need to find the bait. And bait is very important. Um, so here we ended up finding the bait. It took us all morning to find bait and actually catch bait and I threw my cast net like over 50 times and I wore myself out and um, by like high noon I had a headache. So that usually starts when I have a headache that usually tells me I have heat exhaustion. So I worked my butt off this afternoon but we did find the bait, a bait eventually. We got like three or four mullets, live mullets. Everybody says use live mullet for tarpon this time of the year. So we've got that. We've also got our live crabs. We also have live shrimp that we bought at the tackle shop. And we also fished a little cut um, right in front of, what was the name? Little Sisters Rock? Yeah, Sister's little, I think Little Sisters Rock. It was little Sombrero Sisters. Yeah. Uh, Creek maybe. Yeah. And uh, so we fished Little Sisters Rock and we ended up not catching any um, fish there, but we did end up catching some pinfish. So well, we got all those seven inch mangroves you could ever oh. want in your life. Yes. We had to throw all those back, of course, but it was full of, full of mangroves. Yes. And, uh, but right. I don't really consider those little babies fish. Sorry. <laughs> no. So, yeah, so we threw a bunch, threw back a bunch of mangrove snappers, and then uh, we also ended up picking up some live pinfish, which is a really good tarpon bait and just an overall good bait here in the Keys. So now we've got a variety of bait. So we, like I said, we've got the live mullet, we've got the live pinfish, we've got the live shrimp, we've got the live crabs, and we've got chum. So right, we're ready. Right, we got ready. the chum and we got the bonita. Bonita too. Right, yes. and a jack to cut up. Yes, bonita and jack that we caught back home. 
So we've got a lot of bait here, and now we've got live bait. We've got four different kinds of live bait, which is really, really cool. Variety is most important, especially when tarpon fishing. So I think we're going to go out for a little nighttime fishing run and see what happens. Didn't catch any fish yesterday. And haven't caught any fish yet today, officially. So, uh, you know, that's fishing. That's hard work. Um, you know, we try our best to do, you know, bring you um, the most exciting action and show you guys, you know, you know, um, good fish and just, you know, try to, um, you know, teach everybody. But um, it's hard, you know, you, you see that we're struggling, so it's a little bit frustrating. So I think we're going to get out there and try to catch some fish finally. So hopefully we can make that happen for you guys. <laughs> Right, so we're going to get out there, <laughs> we've got our, all our live bait, we're going to go to uh, Back of Cut, where we were there yesterday, and we saw a bunch of fish, uh, a bunch of tarpon rolling, rolling tarpon. so right, so we got all, all the bait, we know where the tarpon are, we're going to go down there and try and get one. Um, you know, sometimes it's frustrating, you know, Darcy puts a lot of pressure on herself, she wants to show you guys uh, some fish, yeah. and when, we, when she doesn't catch any fish, uh, you know, she, she feels bad. Yeah. So it, it, gets, it does get frustrating, but I want to let you guys know we're doing the best we can, we're going to go out there and catch some fish. Uh, if you guys want to put anything in comments, you know, maybe you guys have frustrating days too, uh, how you deal with that. Yeah. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, we're all lucky to be out there on the water. Um, I'm lucky to be out there with Darcy, of course, and we're going to have a nice time either way. Um, so let's just get out there and do it. Sounds good. All right. Go find some fish. Chase it or what do you want to do? He's not jumping, he's not tarping. It's like a nurse shark on the bottom. So we're at the Baca Cut and we've got three lines out and we've been fishing for about an hour. We've been chumming the water. I got a tarpon bite, officially got a tarpon bite on a live mullet. See, you need live mullet. Um, so that fish didn't end up eating the bait and kind of like spit it. So now I'm hooked up on a second fish and I'm not really sure what it is. I feel like it's a shark. We had a dead mullet down deep with a weight and uh, we got it on a circle hook. Oh, get him out of the weed please when you get a chance. Um, so I'm just trying to fight this fish to see what it is, but it feels like dead weight and it just took a long run. So I think it's a shark, but I'm looking for tarpon and it hasn't jumped. We got the other sizzle. Hold on. Turning this fish's head. Um, not sure. We got another hit on the bottom rod and uh, another dead mullet out there, big old dead mullet. And we just got hit again. And it's not jumping, it's staying down deep. It's acting like it's a big old shark. So we'll see what it is in a second. Hopefully we can get it up, but it's head shaking weird like a shark. And I just have a feeling it's like a big nurse shark here in the Keys. They get big, like six or seven foot. And we're also using a mono line, so I would have been cut off if it was a big old shark. Um, you know, we're targeting tarpon, so we'll see what it is in a second, hopefully. See what it is. It's actually coming up now. Just got a glimpse of the fish I'm hooked up to, and I'm pretty sure it's a nurse shark. It's dark brown. It came up about five feet under the surface. It's probably like five or six foot. Um, so yeah, shark figured that, and that's what it is. I'm gonna try and get my crap back, but it might not work. Try and get my leader back and stuff. Force him in. He's right here. Here we go. Check him out. My nurse shark. about four footer, four or five foot. So now I want to catch tarpon. <laughs> Can we? Let me know my scissors. All right, no more bottom rod. <laughs> Don't want to catch any more sharks and I want to catch a tarpon. Shark. So 
something just ate my mullet, my brand new live mullet, my last mullet out in the water and uh, solid on the surface. I've got one that's not so lively, uh, but just this storm started rolling. It's really windy and I just got a bite and I got cut off. So that wasn't my fault. Not sure what it was. Don't know if it was a tarpon or a shark, but it looked very silvery. our luck when we fish. Two live mullets out, I get the lips back, literally, like, who does this happen to? Me. And then the other line just gets cut, two bites right in a row, and a tarpon bite earlier. So I'm trying, it's working, <laughs> just not hooking up. I can't believe this though. Purposely, like, this mullet was like 11 inches long, it was a huge mullet. And as you can see, he purposely like left the actual lips of the freaking mullet. <laughs> right, I think we should go. It's time to go. All right, you can see it's getting a little stormy. Uh, we're out of mullet. We've had we have pinfish. We've had pinfish out all day. No bites. Mullet, three bites. So uh, it's eight o'clock. Live mullet. We have plenty of dead. Plenty of dead. <laughs> they don't get bites either, except nurse sharks. So now it's storming. Eight o'clock. Um, it's gonna get dark in like 20 minutes, so we're gonna storm. hightail it home, I guess. Uh, look at the storm. Beautiful, but deadly. <laughs>